Welcome back to my shop. I was just uh, turning another uh, twig pot. This is going to be a fun project. It's great for beginners, but it's also good for uh, more, more advanced turners because it gives you an opportunity to take a small piece of wood and, and really do something kind of, uh, kind of uh, artsy-fartsy or you can, you can really tap into the right side of your brain to get, get creative. Um, you know, this, is, this is what we're basically talking about, a little twi twig or weed pot. And let me show you a picture of just, uh, just a few samples. And you know, it, it takes a small block of wood, it doesn't take a lot. It could be dried wood, it could be green wood, somewhere maybe oh, about three inches, uh, three to five inches uh, at the base, no more than five inches long. Uh, and you can dye it, you can uh, color it, you can uh, turn it multi axis, uh, you can leave a bark inclusion. It's great if you got a nice piece of figured wood or a piece of burl. Heck, if you even, if you like to cut up little pieces of wood and glue them back together, you can do that too. So, um, before we get started, though, I did want to thank you all. I've, I've crossed over my 5,000 subscriber mark, and I'm just really thrilled and really appreciative of, of all your support and your 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 comments. Uh, so, keep watching. Let's get started. First thing we do is is put the piece of wood between uh, centers and and start roughing it out. In this case it's natural edge so we can start shaping it. You're going to add a uh, tenon here using a, uh, a parting tool to fit your scroll chuck. But if you don't have a scroll chuck, that's another neat thing about this project, is you can do this with uh, by using a, uh, uh, a face plate or, as I'll show you here, by using a, a threaded glue block. Uh, and, and that'll work well. You want to make sure your glue block is is of course side grain because we know in grain doesn't hold glue real well and in this case this is in grain but I've used carpenter's glue I'm not using CA it, uh, it should uh, work well and here's another one for our future work. Okay let's turn this little little uh, spalted uh, sycamore scrap that I've got on a glue block with some carpenter's glue and we're gonna make a little weed pot here a little cool down in my shop. I got long sleeves. I'm aware of them. I'm going to be careful. Nobody comment. Okay. I'm going to start off with a bowl gouge. Spindle gouge would work fine too. And I think I probably better bring up some tailstock support just for just for a little safety measure. Never hurts to use the tail stock if it's not getting in your way. Sometimes if it gets in your way, you still need to use it. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. I'm about 15.50. Now this is a spindle block so the grain is going this way so to cut downhill or cut with the grain I'll be cutting from larger to smaller this will be the top so I'll be kind of shaping this a little bit a little bit like more of a teardrop until I decide where I'm gonna go with it my depth drill it's a quarter inch that I could use but I found that sometimes it gets a little bit off center and for this I want to be very precise because people will be evaluating the the hole of the wall depth so I want it to be accurate 
and not wallow in that hole. I've got this uh, set at two inches. Uh, I think I'll, I'll go I'll go halfway down to about two and a half. I've already got a, a starter hole. Slow it down just a little bit. I'm just going to let it find itself first before I get to going. Go slow. That's perfect. I've still got a little quarter inch or so, at least at the bottom. After I drill the hole, I like to go ahead and do any finishing here and, and bring up a, a tailstock support again if necessary. So I'm going to use my detail gouge. Again, adjusting the tool rest to cut on center. And I'm just going to taper this in a little bit from the, from the side. Turn the speed up a little bit. I'm bracing this because I know it's going to have a tendency to kick back. And it's nice to have it gently go in toward the middle. It kind of draws the eye. Now, I like to just tie, turn a little crisp inward edge on these just because it's uh, it's easy to do and it makes for a nice finish there. You just need to be careful in sanding that you don't get rid of that crisp detail. And now I'm going to come in and layer this in a little bit. Now, I'm looking between here and here, and the lowest point I want about one-third from the top, just the aesthetics, rule of thirds. Again, we're cutting downhill with the grain, larger to smaller because this is a spindle. And I'm looking at that lift a little bit to see if I like it or if I want this shoulder to be a little steeper and I think I think I'll I'll leave this one the way it is. Okay. And I like that. I like that profile. And I've got a pretty clean cut, so I think I can probably start sanding this with the 220 when I get this little corner rib edge off. Now your hands are uh, generally more uh, sensitive to your eyes and if you don't have real good light or if you have real good light, it still pays to feel this by moving your fingers this way. Just feel for any bumps or curves. And I feel just a little bit of one there. Just a hint of one there I've got to go back and touch that I can barely see. 